Okay, just enough physics, chapter four. We're still working on calculated forces. I'm doing some great examples. I think these are great. Uh, in the last video, I made uh, a model for the an object moving near the surface of the Earth. Uh, and so I said, how about we do the moon? And so I'm, I'm just going to show you this thing here. I have a picture here. That's this is. I'm going to show you this model. There's the Earth, and there's the moon, that tiny little thing over there. That's the correct scale. Okay, it's pretty awesome, huh? Okay, so this. This is what we need to do. So here is the, the, the Earth, and here's the moon. I can calculate this vector r from the Earth to the moon, uh, and then I can calculate this gravitational force of the Earth on the moon. That's what we did before except we had an object. But now, but now I want to also calculate the gravitational force that the moon exerts on the Earth. And if you remember, forces are an interaction between two objects. So if the Earth exerts a force on the moon, the moon exerts the exact same force but in the opposite direction. Okay, so then now the moon has momentum, the Earth has momentum, so then I'd have to update both momentums. I'd have to calculate the force on the moon, then calculate the force on the Earth, and then update the momentum. So I'm dealing with two objects. Let's just get to this. It's going to be great. Okay, so I guess I kind of moved this a little bit. Let's see. Let's make this window a little bit smaller. I don't know what I did here. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking here. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. So we can see. Okay, good. Oops, that's too small. That's good. Okay, so you see here I already have the Earth and the Moon, and I did something that I thought was cool. Uh, I actually um, turned on a single light, to, a distant single light, to simulate the, the the Earth and the Sun and all this stuff. You don't have to do that. Okay, but I did that. Oops. So that's what this is right here. That's what that light thing does. Then I have the radius and the mass of the Earth, the gravitational constant, the radius and the mass of the Moon, and then this is the Earth-Moon distance, and then I made the Earth and the Moon. Okay, so why is it doing that? Okay, so now what we need to do, let's just uh, add some stuff in here. So now let's do, set up the initial conditions. Earth.m equals uh, me, uh, Earth.p equals uh, earth dot m times I'm, I'm just gonna pick uh, I'm gonna pick an initial momentum of the earth of zero okay and actually I'm gonna do the moon up here too so let's do moon dot m equals mm you don't have to do that you could just keep using another one but I like to use this because it's uh, better earth dot moon dot p equals moon dot m times uh, let's just pick a value for now um, let's say it's going in the positive y direction so vector um, I'm going to give it 0 5,000 I, I really don't remember what value I should use so that's I don't know let's just go with that okay now I need to do uh, I need to pick the time and I, I in the previous step I used a DT of 10 seconds I'm just going to increase that to 100 uh, just because I think I know what I'm doing, even though I might not. Okay, so now let's do the simple case. Um, let's do while t is less than uh, 10 to the 6. And again, I don't know if that's a good value. I need to pick a rate. I'm picking something that I'm just going to, I don't even know if it's good. Uh, let's do 1,000. Okay. Now, the first thing I need to do is calculate the vector r. So R is going to be from the Earth to the Moon. So it's going to be moon.pos minus Earth.pos. Oh, I had Earth as lowercase. And that's exactly what we did before. Now I'm going to calculate the gravitational force on the Moon. This is exactly what I did before. F equals negative G times Earth.m times Moon.m M times norm R divided by mag r squared. This is the exact same thing I did before. Okay. Now I am going to update the momentum of the moon. Moon.p equals moon.p plus f times d. That's the same. Now I'm going to update the momentum of the earth. Earth.p equals earth.p 
minus f times dt. Because instead of just calculating the force and doing it the opposite way, I'm just going to say it's the opposite of that force. And I didn't do any labels in that because it's my only force, so I think that should be okay. Um, okay. Now I need to update the positions. Moon dot POS equals moon dot POS plus uh, moon dot P times dt divided by moon dot n. That's the same as what I did last time. But now I need to also update the position of the earth. Earth dot POS equals earth dot POS plus earth dot P times dt divided by earth dot n. And then t equals t plus dt. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think I should be good. So let's just see what happens when I run this. Error. Oh. Moon dot uh, ha ha equals. Okay. That was a typo. Okay, so uh, let's do this also. Make trail equals true. And I think I made this thing go too fast. So let's just change this to a thousand. There you go. That's almost a circular orbit. But it, it seems to be working. I'm pretty happy. Okay. Um, that's good enough for me. But let's do this. Make trail equals true for the Earth. Okay, there, you can see it. See that? The Earth's moving. Okay. That is a trail, right? I think that's a trail. I'm looking at the monitor closely. Okay, so is that legit or not? Yeah, that's legit, right? The Earth should move. Uh, let's go ahead and do something cool here. Let's make a graph. Uh, T graph equals graph. Uh, X title is equal to time in seconds. Y title is equal to... Let's plot a graph of the, um, the Y momentum. Y momentum. In kilogram meters per second. Uh, let's also make um, E F E is going to be the plot for the Earth. So it's going to be G curve, and it's the Earth, so it should be blue. Color equals color dot blue, and let's put a label on there. Label equals Earth. Um, let's do. Fm equals G curve. I guess I couldn't do gray. Let's just leave it as black and then put label equals Moon Now down here, I'm going to make a plot. I want to plot the uh, Y momentum of both of the objects Okay, so let's put it before that. I don't know. I've never know if it should be before or after the T, but I don't really care. So Fe dot plot T and I want the Y momentum. So it's going to be uh, earth dot p dot y and then I can do fm dot plot t moon dot p dot y. Let's run this. Okay, so you'll see here that the moon is uh, the momentum in the, of the moon and the earth are changing actually the same amount. The total momentum is zero. The total momentum is not zero. The total momentum is constant. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. Um, but the total momentum is not zero. Look, if I, right here, you can see that it does have some momentum. Uh, and the whole thing is going to drift away. Uh, but the earth would move because of the moon. And that does happen. Uh, and in fact, that's part of the reasons that we have tides, is the motion of the Earth due to the Moon, not just the, the, gra the differential gravitational force. So actually, we can fix this down here. So if I do this, and I do Earth dot 
P equals negative moon dot P. So that's why I made the moon's momentum first. Now when I do this, the total momentum is going to be zero. And it should run just fine. It'll look very similar. But now the the system is going to, the moon's still going to move. The earth's still going to move. But the um, it's going to stay in place. And you could what you should do is try plotting the position of the moon as a function, the earth as a function of time, so you can see its actual motion. Um, let me just do that real quick. I, I'm not going to change the labels. Let's just do this. Let's turn these off. And let's just say fe dot plot uh, earth dot pos dot x earth dot pos dot y. So the labels are going to be wrong, but we'll see the trajectory of the earth in the xy plane. And it's a circle. Okay, you'll notice that. Um, is this? It should be a circle. Yeah, it's a much smaller circle than the moon's moving in, but it, yeah, it's a circle. There you go, good. Okay, I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna turn this off because that was bad. Turn these back on so I can give you this code. And there you go. I'm gonna do one more example for calculated forces. And that's gonna be to go back and redo the mass on the spring. But in this case, make it visual. So we can visualize the motion of a mass on the spring. And with that, we can do something super cool. So if you like this, like like it, uh, subscribe, uh, share this with your friends, share this with your physics teacher, okay? I'm making this for you guys. So if you like it, please use these resources. So if you have questions, you know, add a comment down below. I'll try to answer those. And I will see you next time on the next video. It's going to be great. Later.